sexuality and realizing our infinite potential. Mucho, mucho love and light. Hello, hello, infinite souls. How are y'all doing? Hello. Welcome to another podcast. Woo-hoo. Say hi. I have a special guest today. Her name is Crystal Onyx. She is a lovely friend of mine that I met. Um, I was actually doing a pop-up. She has this event called Mystic Fridays. And um, she's much more than just an event holder. She also is a witch and a tarot reader. So say hi to everyone, Crystal. Hello, hello, hello. So happy to be here, Luna. Thank you for having me on. Yes, so excited. Excited to have you on. Really excited to get into everything that we're going to talk about. So, Crystal, would you please, well, first of all, Crystal Onyx, can you let us know what your name signifies for you? Why, what did you choose? I mean, is that your real name? Onyx? Yeah, it is my birth, my birth name. Um, My parents gave it to me. So I definitely feel like that helped in my um, spiritual, spiritual journey and, and all the crystals, of course, I probably own like hundreds and hundreds of crystals at this point. (laughs) Oh my God. Um, but I definitely resonate with uh, Onyx. It's a very um, protective, confident, no bullshit kind of stone. And uh, I definitely I definitely can see myself um, being compared to it. My little brother has compared me to it. Says that I absorb a lot of negativity and we'll get into that a little later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow, yeah. I, love, yeah. I love all the vibrations of the crystals and different energy that they can bring and it's beautiful so I'm grateful (laughs) I freaking love that I love that your name is a crystal so your parents are into spirituality in some way surprisingly no they've gotten more into it um with me and my journey um I mean we were kind of raised very religious so they kind of felt stuck to that uh I guess those traditions um in our upbringing but I feel they are more open-minded they are like the first generation born American so and like the youngest of their siblings so they are definitely the more open-minded new age (laughs) parents yeah that's cool you got the cool parents (laughs) (laughs) first generation from where where are they from um the Philippines and Mexico Okay, nice, nice mm-hmm. mix. Yes, I love it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Thank um, you. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> to what you said about absorbing negativity that your that you know your brother you said says that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, uh, I feel that a lot of people who are natural born healers absorb a lot of negativity naturally because you know it's drawn to the light, like bugs are drawn to a light, you know, (laughs) in the darkness. So naturally, and because we are here to learn a lot of lessons. And what is the best way to learn a lesson is through go through through darkness, right? So yeah, that, that, yeah, you know, that resonates for sure. I love it. So um, I want to ask you a little icebreaker question that I ask everybody. Go for it. <laughs> what are you grateful for? Um, I am grateful for connections. Um, I truly believe that you can make a connection with anybody that you come across with. And here right now we have a connection between the two of us um, and that's truly how you create relationships and create meaning out of your life so grateful for connections yes I love it oh I got the feels I got the feels <laughs> all over oh. <laughs> thank you that's a beautiful answer yes well I'm grateful for connection as well um so I want to get into 
for I want to get into Mystic Fridays and what that is because that's where we met. You reached out to, mm -hmm. me, to me on Instagram um yes. because i have a shop if you know people who know or don't know <laughs> and um but i do want you to just give us a little background about yourself for the people who don't know you um totally. just so that they can get to know you a little bit definitely well um i am a 27 year old entrepreneur hustler which <laughs> um Mystic Fridays is an event that kind of have created and built with the people around me. Um, it started with me doing readings at um, the venue, which is locals only in LA, Chinatown. Um, and they were just kind of like, you can do whatever you want with this. So definitely just added more vendors and just, you know, just making it more of a community thing. Um, and I've, I've loved, loved the outcome so far. Uh, and coming across your shop, I definitely knew like instantly that I wanted you to be part of it. And you've not only vended, but you've also performed there. And that was so beautiful. <laughs> yes, I sang there, you guys. <laughs> Woo -hoo, I'm a singer. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome that you that's a great location and what you have going on there is really, really admirable. Um, thank you for creating that for doing that for the collective, you know, because people need community now more than ever. Um, because instead of separating each other, we should unify in these times i think you know so that's a great space that you're yeah, you're providing and it's a positive space and and um and it has everything really like it has it's a one-stop shop <laughs> yeah it's totally uh quick plug quick plug in mystic fridays will be coming back february 18th um so that'll be the third friday of february if you're available, totally would love to have you there. But um, yeah, we have some exciting things uh, coming this year. So stay oh, tuned. Wow. <laughs> February 18th. Okay, I'm going to look at my calendar and I'm going to let you know, okay? <laughs> I'm going to get back to you. <laughs> but what's Mystic Friday? So what is it? Like, where did you come up with the name? What What is it? What does it entail? What does it happen? Like, just let us know the rundown. Honestly, it was like a kind of a collaboration with the owner of Locals. She really, you know, gave me the opportunity and believed in me to, you know, just take it and run with it. And that's what I did. Um, I'm pretty sure she's the one who came up with the Mystic Fridays thing. Uh, so shout out to Jamie. <laughs> um, and I mean, it's really a creative space for people to connect and, and just show and display what they do and offer their services. And I have performers lined up. Sometimes I'll have like live painters. I will do readings. They sell some goods. Um, we really just fill the space up with good vibes and energy, you know, got drinks going and food flowing. It's, um, yeah, and it just keeps evolving over time. Uh, it's been going on, going on since September, I believe. Um, so it's been uh, jam packed and fun, just fun to make. Wow, that's super, super cool. I mean, and I love that you guys have uh, food because your girl is always hungry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, I freaking love when places have food like people are always happy when there's food. I, I don't know. I just want my, my Taurus moon is coming out. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's cool. Yum. So the people that come to Mystic Friday, that's like your community, like they're, you're building community there. Do you have regulars that come to see you? Uh, yeah. Um, my close loved ones are definitely some of my number one supporters so shout out to my friends and family mm -hmm. who who keep coming out um yeah they really are my like my backbone and my support so shout out to them for believing in me um and I mean there's new people coming in every time because I'm like being interfaced and connecting with all these you know vendors and artists and them bringing in other people uh just 
it's really fun. It's really fun to to read all these different walks of life. And everybody comes to me with different, you know, different um, concerns and worries. So it's it's really good work and soulful work that I get to do and having these, you know, these conversations. I love that. Now, so you read tarot for other people and you're a witch. So I want to get into the practice of magic and witchcraft, or if you want to call it witchcraft. <laughs> um, and, but how did you, how did you get into magic? How did you know that you were a witch? Um, well, I feel like since before I even knew, uh, I've always kind of been very sensitive, like highly sensitive and like empathic, but I never knew what an empath was until I actually had learned about it, which is like later in my twenties. Um, so since uh, as a baby, I would be, you know, crying all the time and my parents wouldn't know what to do with me. And it's like, they kind of struggled with dealing with that end. But I feel like finding the practice of, of witchcraft and, you know, this little sector of spirituality has really helped me discover um, those abilities and just like the healing properties so it's it's really it's really amazing and it's like a part of my life that I cannot like see myself without because it really is like a it's a purpose it's a purpose and whether it's for me or, or any like other people I it's a way of life I feel mm -hmm. yeah so when did you start first when did you do your first like whatever spell or or <laughs> candle burning or what did you do what was the first thing you did I honestly feel like it started with just carrying crystals around um I think like you know later later teenage years um I had a few friends who were also interested in that and there was you know a little mystical shop that we would go to and <laughs> um I think like I you know as a young stupid kid I I like you know tried to put love spells on people <laughs> I think we I, all did. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh my yeah I just from there it just grew and evolved <laughs> how about how about how about you that's so funny that's so funny I'm laughing because I'm thinking about <laughs> myself <laughs> It's like yeah. I shoot like after I watched um the craft and shit I was trying to do all kinds of spells <laughs> and love spells I you know I didn't understand much I didn't know anything I was just doing it you know but but being being interested in it you know um as a as a kid my mom was very clear um clear sent well not clear sentient what is the um clairvoyant so she was able mm -hmm. to see so she could see spirits all the time around the house so I grew up knowing about spirits and my mom didn't have a set religion then when I got a little bit older like still a child but more like at, um maybe preteen my family got really into Christianity so I was really into christianity and then i and then i stepped away from that you know after i became like an adult like after high school and stuff like the the last years of high school but during that time i didn't i always loved like dark things like mystical mysterious occult things i always was into all that stuff and, but my religion was telling me like, no, not to listen to that stuff, not to watch that stuff, mm -hmm. not to, you know, that it's bad, that it's evil, making me scared of that stuff. So yeah, I didn't get in touch with it until after when I had my quote unquote awakening in 2015, you know, started with crystals and manifesting and then candle burning, and I still do candle burning. Candle burning is my favorite way 
to work with anything with energy and and I learned more about how energy works and what what it really is you know and I had more understanding and so since I think I've been burning candles since 2015 but I I do it now more often now as a practice for myself to kind of bring things into my life to set intentions things like that um to do clearings like if i feel like there's some energy that needs to go <clears throat> and it really helps me a lot you know helps me with healing and it helps me bring good things into my life and it has been very life-changing um so yeah that's my story <laughs> Yeah. And I, and I actually love candles. Yeah. I, I had a, I went into a past life during meditation. And so I did a past life regression on myself. I've had done a few of them. Um, and I saw myself as a child in like a village, like a, but it was like, um, like indigenous village. And we were inside this, <clears throat> like, teepee type thing and I was standing next to this woman an older woman and she was showing me magic like how to do like herbs like I don't know if it was herbalism or what kind of <clears throat> what it was but then um I kind of like panned out because I wasn't in the body I was hovering over <clears throat> so I was watching yeah it. and so I panned out and I went outside of that little hut and there was like men on horses and there was fire like like they were destroying that whole um little oh, no. tribe or, or town or whatever it was so and then then I came back but so I may have done this in a past life you know um I have had psychic friends who have told me that you know I'm a witch or I'm a healer and that kind of stuff so um that often resonates with me so <laughs> so yeah <laughs> yeah Hi, so you just resonate with magic right Do, totally. have you ever have you ever done past life regression or anything like that no, no but that sounds amazing <laughs> I, yeah, I don't even know where to begin with that. Um, seems very intense. I'm still trying to like, you know, make my way through my dreams even and like the psychic abilities. Cause I definitely feel like I can pick on, pick up on like, like being empathic, like picking up on the energy around you. But I'm also like seeing, seeing spirits as well. Like when I close my eyes, I'm not one, <laughs> I'm not one of those people who sees it like in plain sight, but uh, it's pretty intense and and I like I, I don't know what to believe so maybe I need some lessons from you <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean what, what do you mean you don't know what to believe like you don't know what energy you're feeling yeah or how to interpret it or you know what exactly it is that I'm seeing um exactly that yeah Okay, so how long have you been doing, or have you long have you been seeing or experiencing these, these things? Um, probably goes back for a while. I feel like it even starts with like having sleep paralysis and like you know just seeing dark figures, but it's like <laughs> it's not just made up in your brain. <laughs> Yeah. I think it truly is just like you know different energy trying to get into you or you know get to you so it's pretty scary stuff um I I kind of lived in like a little bit of a haunted house and I'm, I might be coming to the realization lately that they might have like stuck to me or like you know clung on to me because in the past I've had like psychics tell me who have come up to me and told me that like I was cursed and I I mean I like thought back to like drama and stuff which totally could be the case but then I'm also thinking of like when I when I confronted the spirits in this in my in my childhood home and and just like 
like they stopped bothering me per se but you know I just told them just to like protect me and you know watch out for my loved ones um but they also might have taken that as an invitation <laughs> you know just to just to take a ride with me or something so it's very interesting stuff um it's not that I'm you know scared of it I you know I confront it every day um just something to be aware of and again like we had talked about just like using the dark to create light um so yeah that's what I'm working through <laughs> yeah yeah I know so so you see you so you have clairvoyance too you can see yeah um did you what did what did the the spirits that you were encountering in your childhood home what were they doing were they what was like what is tell us a it story. was like everybody <laughs> everybody who would be in that house like i would throw a lot of parties i would have a lot of like friends over at times and just like even being a child like just we were just scared of the house like <laughs> I'd always have to take my little brothers with me, like, wherever I went, because I was scared. Um, yeah, everybody kind of, like, has just, like, a story about, you know, just feeling, like, or hearing things and, you know, nobody being there. Um, did do a Ouija board, like, had a little Friendsgiving thing. And maybe I'm in denial, but, like, you know, Ouija boards, I don't take as seriously, but I did do research after that. And like they told, they told me that the year they died was the year that the house was built. So and it was like a family of like three people. Wow. <laughs> oh shoot. Okay, I'm protected. <laughs> no, look, listen. Not not all not all spirits are bad, you know. Spirits are they're they're like us. They just don't have bodies, you know. Some of them are more on the darker side, of course, because we're mm -hmm. all we co we come in gradients, even human, you know. And um, as far as your question that you asked me about um, about mat like your magic, you didn't know like how to how to differentiate the spirits, like. Mm -hmm. you have to develop you know I I don't see with my eyes because I'm scared and I have a blockage right so fear is a blockage that I for anyone you know if you have any type of fear and it'll create a blockage in your psychic gifts and so I okay. don't see with my eyes right I see because I only allow to see with my inner eye so I can see in dreams I can see in meditation um when I do Reiki with people, I can usually see images or I see light. I see with my eyes open, but I only see like energy, like lights. Um, <clears throat> and I don't see full figures because whenever I feel them, I feel them mm -hmm. in my body and my skin. I feel them in the room. I know like where it is in the room. And I can tell if it's light or dark just by the energy of how it feels in my body because okay um just connecting with my heart like if i feel calm then then i know that it is okay but if 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 i if i feel some type of fear um then i will ground myself right i'll take a deep breath and i'll say if you are of the light you are allowed if you aren't of the light then you must leave i am protected by divine white light and then after that then you wait and you see like have they left are they still here <laughs> you know like uh, you know and then you can also say like if you have a a, a hint of who it might be you can say like if you are my deceased uncle for example you know say do this or, or show me a sign or something that way you know exactly who it is because it can be any 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 energy you know <clears throat> any energy because there's energies everywhere and um and it's just about the, your own discernment and what you feel comfortable with um because even when they're when they are uh, entities that are not quote unquote of the light they could still be like they could be like just ground like like somebody who's stuck like on the on the plane you know what I mean like 
doesn't have to be like a demon or something, you know, like, um, so there's different, different types, but I, I honestly, I get, I get scared and I know the fear, you know, <laughs> because it, it can be a lot because they look different than us and we're not used to them. And, you know, it's, it's new to us but you only allow what you want and um and and whatever can attach to you but only if you allow it to and if you ask it to leave it should leave um unless it's like something where you need like an exorcism or some shit but that's like that's more that's very rare you know what i mean it's not like i don't i don't think that's very often um but yeah like my mom heard the spirits that she used to see she knew who they were like she knew that it was like her ex like deceased boyfriend that would visit her and then she was finally she got tired of him coming because he would kind of scare her you know because it's kind of scary and so she asked him to leave and he never came back so so he probably then crossed over you know to the light after she after he knew okay she's okay i can go so, wow. so yeah, that's, that's all I got to say for that. But yeah, that's you're that. the one, in, you're the one in, in power. You're the one in the body, you know, so you can ask them to. I believe it. <laughs> Will do. Yeah. And about, <laughs> and about hexes, like, you know how you said that somebody had told you that they had done a, what did they tell you? Well, the psychics told me that I was cursed. Oh, cursed. What did the, what kind of curse was it, if you don't mind? What did they tell you? <laughs> I didn't ask because I didn't oh, want to know. Yeah. And they, like, these were two people who approached me without me wanting any of that. So. Yeah, they no. just randomly approached you? Oh. Has that happened to you? Like, is this common or? <laughs> you know, I don't know. I, I get, I honestly... I get a lot of people who tell me these stories that they have had people come up to them randomly. A lot of people tell me these stories. I hear this all the time, but I haven't had it happen to me. I had one person tell me that my aura, my aura was purple and that's it. Nothing else. Just a lady that was walking. She's like, oh, your aura is purple. I was like, oh, thanks. I was like, oh, cool. You know, um, but that's it. Nothing else. But I'll tell you what I think about curses. So a curse is, is only alive as long as you keep it alive, right? Because like, no, I, I, I do believe people can do these things, right? But you have the power to protect yourself so that when they do send these things, they do get sent back, you know, and that and they're, they, they don't attach to you. Now, most of the things that people think are a curse are things that you have brought on to yourself because our reality reflects our internal world. And so if you're having negative things happen to you in your reality, there's something internal that's going on. You know, so I only say like when it's a curse or a hex, it's it's only if somebody has personally told you I'm hexing you, you know, like, and you know mm -hmm. that they're into that stuff. Um, but but yeah, most of the time people are like, oh, that person is hexing <laughs> me. Like they could be sending you the evil eye, you know, like bad thoughts. Yeah. But if you are keeping yourself grounded and protected and you're working on yourself and you're working on your path, then you should be good. Like you won't have you won't have a problem with that. Um, and you can always return it to sender, you know. <laughs> mm -hmm. Get mm -hmm. a little huevo cleanse, put that yeah. egg all over you. Yes, yeah. love that. So what kind of magic do would, would you say that you practice? Um, whatever I feel, uh, a lot, kind of a bit of everything. Um, I don't necessarily like to put a label on it or, you know, confine myself to a, to a box because at the end of the day, we're all capable of anything. Um, so yeah, I would, you know, a little bit of divination. I like to, you know, to work with the crystals and just like energy. Um, I like to work with herbs, you know, I believe everything has energy and when you put things together, 
you can manifest certain things. Um, so yeah, I, and it, it's a learning, it's a learning, learning thing. And every single day, is something to learn. So yeah, yeah. Every day there is something to learn for sure. <laughs> What what transformations do you think that magic has done for you in your life? Because I know magic has definitely helped me in many ways. Totally. Um, it's helped me just discover who I am, um, discover what I'm worthy of and what I deserve. Um, it's really helped me through a lot of, you know, dark times and and trauma really like I feel like finding the cards was kind of like a trauma a trauma response and it's really a blessing yes yeah that's beautiful that's beautiful I agree um it has helped me when in dark times when you feel kind of alone it helps you to not feel alone you know, even yeah. though you can do it without it, you know, you can do it with prayer and, and that kind of stuff and meditation. But definitely this is another, it's a calling. It definitely is not for everyone. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. um, what, so for somebody who is not familiar with magic or anything like this, what, what is your, <laughs> my dog is scratching the door over there. <laughs> Let me, I should open the door, but um so don't mind that scratching guys i don't have somebody tied up okay <laughs> um oh gosh i forgot what i was gonna ask you oh what was i saying yeah um For somebody yeah, what is magic know, what yeah yeah is... what is magic what's your definition of magic that's what i was gonna ask <laughs> um i would say it is just using your resources at hand to create or manifest whatever that you're looking for or trying to oh yes so i mean i agree because i think that we are all witches and wizards because we're manifesting our entire life every single moment of the day with every decision that we make we man we make a ripple effect into our life it creates our future which is creating magic you know we're magically creating our future every moment of the day through our mind and our thoughts so manifesting in that way is also magical and so everyone is magical and everyone can tap into this energy for sure mm -hmm. um yeah, because I believe anyone can tap into the energy if they want to or into type, some type of magical workings um, if they really wanted to. What do you think about that? Because I know there are some people that have like beliefs that there are closed practices that should not be shared with everyone. What do you think about that? I mean, that sounds like a cult. <laughs> um, I agree with you in that people, people have the ability to do whatever they want. And, you know, if they decided to pick up some cards one day or, you know, try to heal a part of their body with their hands, like they have the ability to. Um, it's just a matter of doing it yeah and tapping in that's right tap <laughs> in tap in tap in <laughs> all right so now let's get into tarot i really want to get into this because i got a tarot reading from you when i was there at mystic fridays it was nice and fun you oh man let me tell you girl i haven't told you i haven't told what? you <laughs> So, okay, guys, so you did a reading for me at Mystic Fridays. It was like, I don't know how many, how many months ago. When was it? I don't know. I think it was, I don't know, maybe two or three months ago. Yeah. Yeah. And so she had told me, the guy that I was seeing, that there was going to be some problemos, right? She's like, you guys haven't had any problems? I'm like, no, we just met. She's like, well, you guys will. <laughs> well, turns out um 
we're no longer seeing each other because mm. he basically just recently told me that he was not ready, right? Um, no, me, I don't mean to put anybody out there. I'm just, you know, the podcast, I get into it, you know? Yeah. Uh, but so your reading was accurate. <laughs> it's all on point. Day. It was on point. But, you know, he's not the only one. You know, you have options, girl. <laughs> oh, I mean. Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> Sheesh. All right. <laughs> so how did you get into reading tarot? What got you started? Um, hmm. I would say an old friend of mine did. Um, I feel like it from from like my crystal fascination and collection it just kind of turned into me collecting the tarot decks and really just d diving into the study of it and and just like learning and became part of like you know a daily daily uh ritual just you know just to learn more about it um and it, you know like I had said before it helped me get through some like trauma um help me find out that my ex was cheating on me <laughs> you know it just kind of validated that for me um and you know since that I really you know just chose to live by the tarot and it really has helped me along you know my personal journey and it can help anybody it's really just a tool for that so shout out to the tarot <laughs> yeah shout out to tarot yeah definitely validating your intuition like mm -hmm. that's like the best tool exactly for that. that it's the fucking best tool for that and that's that is what the practice of it is i think um for the people who don't really understand what tarot is so you read uh, cards too right do you read cards yes i do read cards it, i'm fairly new at it um okay. i've been doing it for a year probably um every single day for myself and for others I started doing it probably like five months ago but I don't do it often um it's not it's not like my focus my focus is really I want it to be on Reiki and the sound healing and my music um and my content creation, because that's already a lot of things that I have going on, you know. It is. So, so I, so the tarot, I kind of don't focus on that much, but I do it every day for myself, um, because it is a tool that I use to help guide me in my intuition. Because it's it's what your it tells you what your intuition is already telling you, yeah. and then you'll be like, Nah, that's not for me. Like, <laughs> if it's a negative card, you know, Nah, Nah. It can't be. Let me shuffle it again, and oh, there goes the same card, right? So it's just confirmation. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So how how would you say that tarot has helped you grow as an individual? As far as aside from intuition, like, um, any what else has it helped you with? It's helped me with having perspective, um, kind of like understanding the different like archetypes that you'll that you will you know come across in your life and in yourself even um you know even just like the emperor and the empress it's helped me understand my parents more um just understanding why my dad's you know so to the books and only talks about work and having my shit together <laughs> whereas you know my mom is you know just a nurturing caring loving kind sweet-hearted person um it's you know and just it's helped me understand the different signs as well just the different elements like there's just so much sim symbology and and just meaning behind all the cards it's amazing i 10 out of 10 recommend it <laughs> <laughs> 10 out of 10 recommend my friend yeah <laughs> yeah yeah for sure each card is so deep like i since i'm a novice <laughs> uh the the court cards they they confuse me because i never know like if it's me or somebody else so i always try to have like a clarifier or like say okay if it's a court card it's somebody else but then it comes out and it turns out it really 
resonates with me too, you know. So sometimes it's both ways. Definitely. But, um, yeah, yeah. I would I would like another tarot reading actually. <laughs> now yeah, you pull well, the card. You pull the card for us for us today on uh, for infinite souls. So what card did we get? We got the reversed uh hermit, which is very fitting for the current time <laughs> uh, with, you know, the full moon, Mercury being retrograde and Venus also, I believe. Um, just, you know, just kind of isolating and protecting yourself. Um, basically just, you know, just honoring your solitude because at this time, a lot of people from your past are gonna be coming and it's just, you know, having to make that decision to, to focus on yourself. Um, although it is a little lonely, this is also the perfect time to rest up and, you know, just to get your mind right, because that's very important. Um, so let's get it. <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah, I'm glad that we got the Hermit in reverse. Or we got it in reverse, or was it upright? Yeah. The you know the way that i resonate with it you know it i am a hermit <laughs> i'm always <laughs> i've been in hermit mode since 2020 girl like i have not came out of hermit mode i'm slowly like dipping my toe in the water and and spirit is telling me it's time to come out now you know now is the time to shine. This is the year that you have to step into your full power. Now, of mm -hmm. course, I'm the hermit in reverse shows me that we're still in isolation or we still have been in that hermit mode, um, but that we now are more in tune to um, have discernment of where we're going to spend our energy when we do go out and when we do come out you know, with people. Mm -hmm. So definitely, that with this full moon really aligns <laughs> so yeah whenever you guys are hearing this episode i'm sure you guys will still resonate with it <laughs> that's awesome um man we've had an amazing show today what else is there anything else that you want to talk about that we haven't we haven't touched base on um just, you know, just with you, I'd like to talk about how we both kind of how to how we go about the process of meshing the, you know, just the practices that we have and with the business side of it. Um, what what morals do you do you find yourself like abiding by in terms of that, like when it comes to creating content or, you know, making a sale what what do you what do you try to abide by thank you thank you for asking <laughs> me a question <laughs> <laughs> so you know i i still am um figuring out how to balance business and my craft as far as you know the magical things that I do <laughs> with my own self. Um, but as far as like content creation and the things that I put out, the businesses that I get involved with, the promotional things that I do for others, like I want to, I want to make sure that it's all aligned with me. So you have to have clear understanding of who you are and what is important to you. What is it that you are giving as a gift? Because that's what you're offering, a little piece of yourself, right? So what is the gift that you're offering? And that is going to be your gift and for, it's going to be forever your gift, right? So if you're offering love, right? I'm offer, my, my goal is to share more love on earth than any other energy. And, and whatever that means, for whatever situation it's going to apply you know it always applies for everything and so if it's aligned with my heart then then it's a yes sometimes there are things that I may be on the fence about confused you know because I have like other things going on I'm not sure 
And those moments, I will leave it to spirit or to my spirit guides. I will go into meditation. I will meditate on the question, on the decision, um, what my choice should be. And I offer it up to the spiritual realm and I wait for an answer. If I don't receive the answer, sometimes I get the answer in meditation, like I'll know what I have to do. And sometimes and not right away. And I'll just have to wait a couple of days, but you have to like release it, you know, not like be, oh my God, I'm waiting for it, you know, for what do I have to do? Because then you're just stressing and you're pushing it further away. So yeah, just releasing it and, and always being aligned with your heart. You know, I, I believe that it should be heart centered because that if we're in the age of Aquarius baby <laughs> nothing like love uh, you get nothing like love 10 out of 10 recommend <laughs> <laughs> I agree I agree that's mm -hmm. awesome that's very beautiful yeah thank you thank you I've been very blessed to just um the way that my astrology chart is set up uh <laughs> <laughs> I the way that I express myself is very graceful and thoughtful of others before I speak and just naturally that's how I speak it's not really thought out and um but but sometimes that could be very um rash and with my words like just like straight up especially when I'm bothered <laughs> so so having um having a practice like meditation I meditate every single day. I meditate twice a day. And that may be a lot for some people. I'm not asking everybody to do it twice a day, you know, but at least once a day, even if it's five minutes, you know, because that centers you and that grounds you and that will help you react. I mean, respond instead of react, you know, mm -hmm. from a place of like reactionary, like either it's a trigger or something um and then you can respond with the proper response so yeah <laughs> absolutely yeah meditation is key yeah yeah do you meditate I do um I would say it's like it is an everyday practice um you know I try to touch base with myself every day uh I consider you know my affirmation affirmations kind of a meditation um, but also, you know, just in every thought that you have can also be a meditation. And, you know, just seeing, just removing yourself from everything to in turn, you know, be part of everything, I think is very important. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I freaking, I love meditation. That's also a 10 out of 10. <laughs> <laughs> I, I tell everyone, yeah. every, that's what I recommend to everyone. And if you actually, before we log off of this, uh, there's a new study by, by uh, Dr. Joe Dispenza about meditation and about, you know, the current virus <laughs> that it actually uh, has, will prevent you from getting the, the virus or if you have it, or if you have had it, it will make it um, last shorter period of time. And um, wow, the symptoms will be very, very less. So, so it's, and the study, they've been studying this for years, but they have just released the, um, the data. So it's, it's very compelling and very amazing. And um, so I think that's why I, I, have been healthy this whole time you know <laughs> so I just wanted to share that with everyone because it's very important information that everyone must know um and that's what this podcast is for to get information out you know <laughs> so my lovely crystal onyx can you please let us know what are your social media handles so you can find me on Instagram um, at Crystal Onyx Sanctum. I don't know if this is going to be, I don't know if this is, you know, the right way or if the letters yeah, are backwards. Yeah, I think it is. I think I, I see it correctly. So yeah, Crystal Onyx Sanctum. Um, also on TikTok, working on the website should be out this year. Um, we also have a Mystic Fridays IG at mystic.fridays. Find us, find us there. We'll be working hard this year. 
Yes, Mystic Fridays. I love it. Please follow her and Mystic Fridays. You guys will not regret it. And thank you, thank Crystal, you. for being here. I'm, I was so happy that you said yes. And thank you for joining me. Yeah, I'm so glad we finally got to make it happen. It's been a little bit of on and off rescheduling, but that's okay. I am, yeah, very grateful and very happy with our conversation. Yes. Ooh, okay. All right, you guys. So as always, thank you guys, you lovely infinite souls for listening or watching wherever you're listening to this podcast. And mucho, mucho love and light. Ciao. Bye.